Happy New Year, everyone. As we step into 2026, I want to take a moment to revisit the journey of this channel. When I first started, the focus was AI for accountants and finance professionals. Back then, AI felt new. There was excitement, uncertainty, and honestly, a lot of hype. Now in 2026, we are past that stage. The question today isn't what is AI? It's how do we operationalize it? Throughout the later part of 2025, I kept hearing the same question from the teams and organizations. How do we actually use AI in real workflows? So in this video, I want to break it down clearly layer by layer and explain what AI really means for accounting and finance today. In simple terms, AI is about machines handling tasks that humans used to do. But in our profession, the goal isn't replacement. The goal is supporting professional judgment. And as we move from Excel to Python to web-based agent workflows, I hope this helps clarify where each layer fits and why it matters. Before we talk about tools, before we talk about Excel, Python, or agentic workflows, and definitely before we talk about code, we need to talk about architecture. In the age of AI, code is abundant. Large language models can generate syntax instantly. Writing code line by line is no longer the bottleneck. What actually matters now is structure. Once you understand the structure of your workflow, LLMs can generate code that fits that structure. That's why I focus less on teaching code line by line and more on explaining how systems are designed, how data flows, and where human judgment belongs. Once the architecture is clear, the tools and the code naturally fall into place. I also want to be very clear about this. There are many excellent YouTube channels that teach coding line by line. I'm not here to replace any of them. If your goal is to learn how to write code, LLMs are a great tool for that. Pick one or two solid YouTube channels, follow along, and use LLMs to help you learn faster. That's not the problem I'm trying to solve here. What I focus on is how to structure the work so the code actually makes sense in a real workflow. Excel remains the cornerstone of accounting and finance, not because accountants are stubborn, but because Excel's approach professional judgment. What many people miss is that Excel already has a lot of automation and AI built in, like Power Query and VBA, which I use daily. While I haven't delved deeply into Office Script, I recognize their potential as well. VBA is a powerful tool for automation as well, with a structure VBA, you can integrate and automate across Microsoft Office apps from Outlook to Word and PowerPoint and create custom macros that can be carried across workbooks. In essence, Excel and VBA together create a robust and flexible automation environment. And I look forward to sharing more insight in the future. In addition to these tools, Excel's analyzed data features and integration of Python highlights how the platform has adapted to modern data needs. Microsoft's decision to incorporate Python into Excel shows the recognition of Python's importance in the data ecosystem. I've shared many examples of how to automate financial reporting using Power Query, proper data modeling, reusable DAX calculation, and dynamic presentation using cube functions. This four-step approach, get data, model it properly, calculate once, and present dynamically is still incredibly powerful. I encourage viewers to explore these techniques in detail through my videos to streamline financial reporting. The problem is not Excel. Use properly Excel as a powerful automation platform and it will continue to be. Problem, in my opinion, is unstructured Excel. As the problems grow, Excel eventually reaches a point where it starts to struggle. Not because Excel is bad, but because the problem has outgrown it. That's where Python comes in. Python becomes a control layer. And I want to be very clear about this. Python governs Excel, 
it does not replace it. This is in disruption, this is progression. Python is excellent at things like data ingestion, data transformation, reusual logics like functions, scheduling, automation, and, and integration with the Excel files, PDFs, emails, APIs, or data warehouses. This is where automation becomes sustainable. Excel remains the interface. Python controls the process. Excel is still excellent at what it was designed for. Structured reporting, financial statement, judgment-based modeling, control the data set, and human scale analysis. That's why Excel remains the operating system of accounting and finance. But Python is built for a different scale. Python really separates itself when you start dealing with the machine learning, large scale data processing, simulations, stress testing, and performance. Yes, you can technically do some of this in Excel, but you hit limits very quickly. Python can handle millions of roles, thousands of scenarios, and full probability distributions. Instead of a single point estimate, you get ranges. And that fundamentally changes how decisions are made. Python also integrates deeply with Microsoft's Office. It reads, writes Excel, automates Outlook emails, generates Word and PowerPoint slides, and orchestrates entire reporting workflows end-to-end. -end. So again, this isn't about replacing Excel. Excel is human scale. Python is machine scale. And together, they form a workflow that actually works in the real world. So at this point, the question becomes, if Python is a control layer, what's the main workspace? For me, it's a Jupyter notebook. I think of Jupyter the same way I think about Excel. It's the main workbook. Jupyter is powerful because it's just sequential. You run a cell and the result shows up right below it. That makes it very easy to review, validate, and explain the result. For accountants and finance professionals, this is huge. We need to see the numbers. We need to validate things step by step. Jupyter fits that mindset perfectly. It's designed for review, iteration, and explanation, not just execution. One thing to note is that a Jupyter notebook should not be a giant code dump. I don't put all my logic directly into the notebook. The notebook is for orchestration, not clutter. It calls functions, it runs steps in order, and it shows output clearly. If something needs to change, I update the Python functions, not the notebook. Most of the logic lives in separate Python files, usually named something like func.py or utility.py. Those functions are the brains of the workflow. They hold the reuse of logic. The notebook simply imports those functions and orchestrates how they run. Here's how I structure Python files and Jupyter notebooks in practice. I always start with the cell zero. Cell zero is boring, but very important. That's where I import libraries, pandas, numpy, database connectors, anything I need. If someone on the team is missing a library, I leave a installation comment there so they know exactly what to install. Then comes cell one, and this is one of the most important cells. Cell one is a configuration, month and date, file path, folder locations, column names, assumptions, things that change every month. So instead of hunting through the notebook, everything that changes lives here. Anyone opening the notebook immediately knows this is where inputs go. All real logic lives in separate Python files. The notebook orchestrates the function to the work. This is what makes workflow scalable. Security and governance are critical. Credentials never go into the notebook. Database password, API keys, tokens, all of that lives in a .emb file. The EMB file is never shared. Each team member has their own .emb file. Same notebook, same logic, different credentials. The notebook itself lives on a shared drive, so everyone sees the same workflow. This makes training much easier. 
people open the notebook and then immediately see where input you go, where your logic lives, where output you appear, cell by cell, step by step, no guessing. From the notebook, I can generate Excel files, PDFs, charts, summaries, whatever the output needs to be. And then I can automatically send those outputs via email with links, attachments, status updates. Automation isn't finished until communication happens. This structure is easy to teach, it's safe, and it respects professional judgment. Anyone can write Python. The difference is whether someone can come back three months later and still understand what's going on. Now, this works incredibly well on the desktop. The next question is, how do we scale this beyond individual machines and teams? So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, Excel works, Python works, Jupyter works, so why web? You can build agent and machine learning pipeline locally in Python. You can automate everything on the desktop. I've been doing that for years, but eventually you hit a limitation. And that limitation is just sharing. At this point, you realize if this only runs on my machine, then I become the bottleneck. I want something that my team could use at the same time. No installations, no setup, just log in and work. That's when WAP becomes the natural next step, browser-based, centralized, secure. Let me give you a real example. About a month ago, we had to process close to 6,000 invoices. There was a time sensitive work. Every month we delay, we lose real money. The team was on different schedules, holidays, regular work days, and everyone wants to help. But well, 6,000 invoices is simply too many to handle manually. This is very real in accounting. For small to medium-sized public accounting firms, clients still show up with the shoeboxes for tax and financial statement engagement, PDFs, scans, photos. So I quickly built a small web app. I connected to the Google's pre-trained OCR model through an API and shared the link with the team. Everyone used it at the same time. No installations, no setup, no support requests. And we saved the company a significant amount of time and money. That's when it really clicked for me. It shouldn't be a one-off project. It should be a platform. That idea became cash flow. If I go further, I want to share something personal. I'm an accountant by training. That's my background. That's still how I think. I didn't come from a computer science background. I didn't start as a web developer. Cash flow is something I'm building while I'm learning. I'm learning web development end to end from creating the hero page to animations and front end design to back end logic, API integrations, authentications, and data flows. Honestly, it's been challenging. There are days where I'm clearly outside of my comfort zone, but I wanted to understand the full stack, not just conceptually, but practically. I'm doing this step by step, one piece at a time. I'm sharing this because this isn't about pretending to be an expert in everything. It's about learning in public, building responsibly, and improving continuously. I also hope this encourages some of you. If you're an accountant or a financial professional, someone who spent years inside Excel and reporting, you can learn these skills. You can move into app development. You can learn web-based workflows. You can build tools that help your team or help others. You don't need to become a full-time developer, but understanding how these systems work makes you a much stronger professional. If you're on a similar journey or thinking about starting one, I genuinely love your feedback and encouragement. Welcome to the debut of Catchflow. Right now, the website is still in its early stages and I'll be continuing to build it out through 2026. By the time you are watching this video, I would have completed much of the foundation agent one of the OCR features. For now, I've set up the basic scaffold and you will be able to switch between light and dark modes. Personally, I prefer dark mode to reduce eye strain, especially during the long hours of work. The goal is simple, automate the repetitive work. 
for humans can focus on judgment, strategy, and decisions. This is natural evolution of everything you've been seeing in this video. Cash flow is built around three core agents. First, there's a data engine. The data engine handles all data, both structured and unstructured. You can upload a wide range of file formats, Excel files, PDFs, scanned documents, images, and the system performs the necessary analysis to prepare the data for downstream news. Second, there is a reporting agent. The reporting agent focuses on financial reporting and compliance. Its role is to ensure that disclosure requirements are met, the reports are generated consistently, and that data remains secure and private throughout the process. This is especially important in accounting, where accuracy, traceability, and governance matter. Third, there is the FP&A agent. The FP&A agent focuses on budgeting and forecasting, fairness analysis, scenario analysis, and simulations of operational result, including Monte Carlo simulations and broader operational simulations. I'm planning to publish a dedicated video on operational simulations sometime in February, but if you are not familiar with the operational simulations, here is a simple way to think about it. Let's say you are considering opening a new store. The question isn't just revenue. What happens to staffing, inventory, rent, cash flow, seasonality? Operational simulations allow you to test those assumptions before committing real money. Instead of a single forecast, you get ranges of outcomes, which leads to better decisions. Together, these three agents work as a system. The data engine prepares and structures the data. The reporting agent ensures compliance and consistency. And the fp agent helps you understand future business outcomes. When you log in, you have the option to use your email while proceed with a Google login for convenience. Within the My Account section, you have the flexibility to create and manage multiple projects and clients. Depending on the nature of each project, you can deploy different agent modules. For instance, if you're working with an audit client, you will likely use a data engine and reporting agent together to handle structured data and reporting needs. In scenarios like Q4 financials, both the fp &A and reporting agents are essential, allowing you to manage both forecasting and compliance effectively. When conducting due diligence, you'll often deal with the large volumes of unstructured documents. In these cases, the data engine can process, convert digital documents using OCR, storing them in vector database for easy searching and summarization. You can also easily add new project by clicking on the appropriate icon, giving you the flexibility to expand and customize your workflow as needed. As the platform evolves, your dashboard will continue to grow and improve. While the settings are still under development, I'm committed to creating a robust and user-friendly experience. This isn't about replacing tools, it's about layering them responsibly. Excel, Python, Jupyter, web, progression not disruption. Thanks for being part of this journey.